Good afternoon. Hello, I'm Sarah Bear Sennett, president of Old Ways, and I'm so pleased to host this very interesting webinar, Cur Curry, Dal, and Ghee, Meeting the Needs of Indian Patients with Madhu Gadia. But first, a few words about Old Ways. Old Ways is a food and nutrition nonprofit helping people live healthier, happier lives through cultural food traditions like the Mediterranean diet and the Asian diet. We believe that food is the greatest gift of heritage. Our mission is to inspire people to embrace the healthy and sustainable joys of the old ways of eating. To do this, we create and share healthy how-to resources and recipes and organize educational programs and events like this one. While we're best known for the Mediterranean diet pyramid and the whole grain stamp, we also have cultural models for healthy eating around Asian, Latin American and African heritage traditions. When you look to heritage, there is so much to discover or rediscover. Diabetes is not part of heritage and neither is heart disease. What is heritage is a strong body, extraordinary energy, vibrant and delicious foods and a long healthy life. Old Ways has a number of Asian heritage diet resources for RDs on our website, which is oldwayspt.org, including the Asian Heritage Diet Pyramid, Asian Heritage Diet Brochure, and many other handouts, such as Asian cooking oils, whole grains in the Asian diet, and common foods and flavors of the Asian Heritage Diet. A few housekeeping notes. The session is being recorded and we will be posting slides and all attendees will receive an email with the CPEU certificate within one week. And that email will also include the slides and recording. And now I'm very pleased to introduce Madhu Gadia. She has worked in a variety of clinical and corporate settings. She's an accomplished nutrition and diabetes counselor a nationally recognized speaker and an author. Her expertise includes healthful eating, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and other health and nutrition related topics. Madhu is now focusing on her passion, Indian cuisine. Her goal is to demystify Indian cuisine and teach people how to cook Indian food easily and effortlessly. Madhu is an author of New Indian Home Cooking and The Indian Vegan Kitchen. Her books have been featured in magazines such as Oprah, Prevention, and Bon Appetit. She believes nutrition and cooking are her passion and she's equally committed to both. She's a firm believer that healthy and tasty foods go hand in hand. I'm sure she'll tell you about her website, which is cuisineofindia.com. And without further ado, please welcome Madhu. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for that lovely introduction. And thank you, fellow dietitians. Thank you all for joining. And today we're going to primarily focus on getting to know Indians. Okay, hold on. I'm going to share my screen. Getting to know Indians as to who they are and everything you'd want to know about um, how to help these patients. And as we talk, you'll get to know why you really, they need you just as much um, as of course you need your patients, but they need you because um, they need to be focused on getting better, okay? So, right, let's see, just getting to learning a little few clicks here and there. All right, so hold on. Uh, so the learning objectives of this uh, webinar is that you want to be able to identify traditional meal patterns, food practices and holiday foods of Indian and South Asian individuals. Apply culturally competent counseling strategies when working with patients and clients of Indian and South Asian descent. And you wanna be able to develop a medical nutritional therapy plan that is respectful of the traditional natural treatments. And we'll learn a lot about that. 
All right, first of all, let's figure out what is South Asia, okay, or who are these South Asians? So if you look at this map, um, you can see that this basically is South Asia, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and the Maldive Islands, which are way off on this side of the ocean. All right, so how many South Asians are in the USA based on 2018? Um, record about almost 6.2 million South Asians are there, almost 2% of the population. And of which 1.2% are Indians, and then there are Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Nepalis, um, Sri Lankans, and so on. Okay. <clears throat> So why are these Indians here? Well, they, first of all, where do they come from? They migrated from India, most of them, but you might find Indians that actually uh, migrated from Africa, Fiji, Guyana, and because they went there 100 plus years ago, and now they're in um, America. Most of them will be Hindus that you meet that are from India. That said, I, although I'm talking about South Asians, but I'm going to use that a little interchangeably, but primarily the focus is on Indians here. Okay, the uh, primary religion will be Hindus, but you'll also might find Sikhs. Sikhs are the people that wear turban and Muslim, which are from India, Christians and Jains. They're called Indian Americans. Now this may sound a little cliche, but I have had a time when I told somebody I'm an Indian and the first thing they asked me was, what tribe are you from? So this still happens. And I know my kids have had that too. So um, Indian American versus American Indian, okay? Which are two different tribes, I guess. Majority of the Indians live in large cities. Um, and that's often happens for immigrants. They're primarily on the East and the West Coast. And then large cities like Chicago, St. Louis, Atlanta, um, and a lot of large universities will have a lot of Indians. Okay. If you meet an Indian, they're typically short stature, the height, I mean, how do you identify an Indian? Typically short stature, average height of men are, is about five, six, and women is five, three. They're usually medium built um, and medium weight, and they typically have a pot belly, tend to carry their weight around their stomach. Again, this is average, of course. Brown complexion, brown eyes, black hair. This kind of reminds me of uh, when, uh, when I think of black hair, it was um, one little girl said, uh, she was white and she said, oh, that girl with the black hair. And I'm like, what do you mean? I thought everybody had black hair. So this is how um, we, majority of us have black hair. All right, uh, why are they my, uh, immigrated to America? Of course, it's a land of opportunity. You'll find a lot of doctors, professors, engineers. They came to the US to study. And in order to get into good universities, they had to be pretty um, smart. Uh, and that's why we uh, often say this is a brain drain from India to US, you get the cream of the crop. Um, which is all good for US and of course, good for individuals as they get opportunities. There's approximately 75% of BA or higher degrees, bachelor's or higher degrees. And a lot of them will have higher income level and there are, but there are some that have moderate to low income level, okay? This is your general characteristics. The cultural characteristics, family is huge, okay? They will spend time with the family. They will, um, when you're talking to them, 
you want to see what they do with the family or what are the family uh, priorities that the individual holds. Don't be surprised if they come in and say, my son goes to Harvard and my um, daughter is a lawyer or they're very, very proud of their kids and which I, everybody is granted. And they will often, um, they'll spend money on them. They will pay for their education and education is huge. Sports and um, music are often secondary. It's a patriarchal society, whether we like it or not, dad knows best. And he often runs uh, the family and mother is just as important. She's the center of the family and she makes the household decisions that way. Meals are sacred, okay? It's not like, okay, just put the meal together at the last minute. Um, it's more about what's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, or what are we buying or what are we serving, et cetera. Uh, take care of parents and grandparents. So when you see a patient and, you know, the grandparent lives with them, do not, I mean, this is just what we do. We take care of our elderly and, um, or they may be visiting from India, of course, in COVID era, they unfortunately cannot come, but they may be visiting from India and they'll stay four to five months. Okay, um, it's not unusual. They have a huge social network. They're not people who like to be by themselves. They have parties on weekends. They have, um, they're social people, okay? Uh, parties is a huge part of it, just getting together. Um, family and friends, they have dual loyalties. They've come to this country and they want to be part of it. They are loyal to India, but they're just as loyal to America. Uh, and for their children, they want to have them blend into the uh, into the country and culture. And so they sort of, there's a little bit of a confusion going on there sometimes for the kids, but they are equally committed to both of their places of where they came from and where they live now. Now let's talk about their health concerns. These are their three main things. Their diabetes, coronary artery disease, which is of course heart disease, hypertension and stroke and metabolic syndrome are huge for them. These are all chronic diseases. You dietitians in general know about chronic diseases, so I don't need to go into that much. Uh, but Indians, as I will show you, are predisposed to these conditions. Let's talk about diabetes. They're three to five times more likely to develop type two diabetes than a Caucasian. You know, when you're, you're talking about different ethnic groups like blacks have more, uh, probability there uh, of developing type two Hispanics, American Indians. Um, and so Indians or South Asians, actually all of South Asians fall in the same category. On top of that, they develop it 10 years earlier than um, your Caucasians, okay? We talked about the metabolic syndrome, hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistant. They have that as predisposition, okay? About 66% of the population has insulin resistant. This is an estimate up to 66%. And this is compared to Caucasians up 25%. Central obesity, which actually causes insulin resistance, is all related. Higher metabolic rate, which is where the 25% of people 
Caucasians have higher me metabolic rate, rate than the other 75%, whereas Indians, 50% of them have a higher metabolic syndrome, uh, which predisposes them to diabetes. Children also have higher levels of insulin and insulin resistance. So the education the, uh, should be started earlier and as well as intervention. This is a true throughout the world. Children did not used to be overweight. As we know, more and more children are becoming overweight and therefore they're being, pre they're getting diabetes earlier. What is it? Diabetes of the young. Okay. Here, and the, and the picture isn't prettier. Pretty. It's, you know, this is a map of how the epidemic is in South, among South Asians. It is believed from 2005 to 2025, the number of people with diabetes is more than doubled. So if, since we're already in 2020, 2020, this number is already up there. I am really worried or thinking, what is this COVID going to do? Is it going to make this, it's definitely going to make it worse as we're more inactive and definitely eating more as we are home. But this is, this is, a, this is a map that was um, uh, published in 2010. And it's, it's pretty disheartening. What about coronary artery disease? All right. Three Indians are three to five times just likely to have prevalence of coronary artery disease, hypertension and stroke. Okay. Picture isn't any prettier here. Heart disease manifests earlier than in other ethnic groups. Okay. So um, again, earlier, just like diabetes, heart disease. I mean, I recently, my neighbor's friend, a uh, brother passed away, he was only 48, something like that, and totally unexpected. I mean, this is, of course, I'm just talking about one person, but as you can see, it does um, manifest earlier. Indian women have similar rates of heart disease as men, so Indian women are not um, or are just as prone. And it's the leading cause of death among South Asians in the US. And this is the NIH Healthy People 2010 designated Indian immigrants as a high risk group for heart disease. Okay. So um, as you know, what are the causes? They're very similar for diabetes and heart disease. You know, um, the thing that I like to say is just being an Indian is a risk factor itself, or just being a South Asian is a risk factor. Okay. And they also tend to have higher triglycerides, le triglyceride levels, not just higher uh, LDL levels, but also higher triglyceride levels, which I think has something to do with the hyperinsulinemia. All right. Now let's talk about their health beliefs. What do they believe? Uh, okay. So Indians in general, will um, actually, we subscribe to all methods of uh, medical methods, okay? I grew up going to a regular doctor, which we call med modern medicine or allopathic, um, but I've also gone to, my mother took me to homeopathic and Ayurvedic doctor was right around the corner. Yunani is a um, old Arabic um, form, of, uh, Greek form of um, medicine, which actually is increasing in, the, in India versus decreasing. And Indians, when you see them, ask them if they're taking any homeopathic medicine or um, herbal medicine. Um, they just take it and don't think twice about it. It's not alternative medicine. They're just doing it right from the beginning. Okay. Yoga, meditation, I think I, in this country, it has 
just as popular maybe as in India now, or, well, probably not true, but it's getting popular, but in yoga and meditation in India is actually has a comeback, okay? Although it traditionally started from there, but stress relief for stress relief, as well as part of taking care of yourself is all um, only increasing, not decreasing, which of course you wanna ask them if they're not doing it, encourage them, okay? Now, why is yoga and meditation just increasing? Because it's, again, we know it's a multi-million dollar company because it has, all of a sudden people realize or Indians realize that yoga and meditation was being practiced in throughout the world. And here we needed to take a little bit more ownership as well as we have uh, different uh, yogis and politicians and businessmen are making um, this very much their own actually. I'm not, and prime minister, the recent prime minister Modi start, uh, declared an international day of yoga, which was in 2015. And I just read that World Health Organization also has June 21st is International Day of Yoga. And they're also embraced it. Now, WHO is working, actually, let me go back, um, previous slide. WHO is um, very much looking into including homopathic, Ayurvedic, Panchkarma, yoga, meditation into the modern medicine. And not only just including it, validating it, promoting it, but also making sure that it's done in a reputable way and in the right way, which is great. All right, but now, what are the assumptions? Indians have assumptions about Indian diet. They, some of them are misconceptions. And so is the society in general, med, medical professionals. We all have some interesting assumptions about Indian cuisine. Some will say Indian diet is healthy, done. Some will say, well, it's very rich because they only eat in restaurants. Okay, that's their introduction to Indian cuisine is restaurants. Well, if your introduction to, um, let's say Italian cuisine was only restaurants, especially Italian restaurants in America, you'd say it's very rich because it's so much of it is cream. Same thing with Indian restaurants. So is it healthy or is it not? Vegetarian Indian diet is cardioprotective. Now, 50% of Indians are vegetarian. So they, I recently was at a doctor and he goes, well, you're vegetarian. You know, you shouldn't have any issues. Well, first of all, I'm not 100% vegetarian, I, but that's besides the point. I am 99, 95% of the time vegetarian. So that said, it's an assumption that it's cardioprotective. We just said Indians are three to five times more likely to have cardiovascular disease. Okay, if you've ever um, taken a diet history from a vegetarian, you know that they don't always eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. There is an assumption they eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, okay? I was talking at an at a organization that was just all Indians and I asked, how many of you do you think you eat two fruits a day? You'd be surprised how few raised their hand. Okay, and they were, I'd say 90% vegetarian in that session, okay? How many get enough vegetables? You'd be surprised, maybe not. Actually not. <laughs> My weight is okay. Indians and South Asians in general don't value skinniness, okay? They're okay with their weight. Actually, you may think they're not that overweight when you, you know, you take their weight. 
but they are supposed to be, we'll get into that a little bit more later, is Indians by genetics should be lower weight than even the BMI recommends. So, but they will come in and they'll say, well, my weight's not an issue. Of course, everybody thinks that diabetes is caused, a lot of people think diabetes is caused by sugar intake. And if I would just get rid of sugar, everything will be okay. So you've got your work cut out for you. These are the realities of today, whether they're Indians or they're uh, Americans, everybody is multitasking. Okay, now we just talked about Indians. You have to remember that these Indians came from, um, they're immigrants, right? Immigrants tend to work hard. They, they work harder than once you're settled just because they need to prove to the family they left behind that there is a reason they came here. They, they work hard, they're smart, and they have sedentary jobs. Uh, and they're falling into the American trap of meal, eating meals. They've abandoned meals and they'll, especially lunch or even breakfast, they're running out the door and they're snacking. And you know what that does? Ask them, make sure they may be eating out board more, just, well, I don't know what they're doing in pandemic era, but that's true of everyone. Um, but post pandemic, they may be go back to eating out more, okay? Just because it's convenient. And people don't think they eat out more, but they're eating lunch out. Well, that's one third of your meals, okay? Increased demand on your time, which is true. Increased stress, which is true. Um, we have to do it all and this is not true new to Indians, but just because they're immigrants, they may be working super hard or, you know. Now, before you even get started um, counseling them on making changes, find out what are they willing to do. This is my favorite cartoon. I've saved it for God knows how long. Um, it says, I haven't had a bite to eat in three days. She said, that's terrible. You should have a bowl of hot soup, a glass of milk, and some buttered toast. Hey, lady, I'm looking for money, not a dietitian. Okay. What are they willing to do? What makes sense to them? Okay. Um, nobody likes advice, but they're there. They're in your office. So they need some, but what? Now let's talk about what is, where are you gonna focus? Okay, what is an Indian meal? Indian meal, this is a traditional Indian meal. Okay, it's served in a platter or a plate, uh, which is basically has everything in there, served in little bowls. And this is of course a party meal. And there is uh, meat if they're non-veg, Again, 50% are vegetarian. They should have beans or dal. Yes, we call all beans dal. And uh, there may be one or two vegetables at home in a family situation. I mean, everyday situation, you'll just have one vegetable. If you're having a party, you'll have two vegetables. Rice or roti, or uh, which is the flatbreads, the chapatis as they're called, or naan, they'll have some kind of a flatbread. Plain yogurt, we eat plain yogurt to, uh, with our meals. So there's your calcium, it's built in, okay? So Indian vegetarians are typically lacto-ovo vegetarians or they're lacto-vegetarians, sorry. Some of them don't even eat eggs, but milk is included in the Indian vegetarian diet. A lot of them may be turning vegan, but very small, very few but just because they grow up with yogurt, okay? And yogurt is part of their, uh, their meal pattern. A salad or crudite, just a couple of bites of crunch. We, uh, I did a cooking demo uh, last week and showed a cut, created a, 
a simple meal of a traditional in Indian meal, you know, of dal, one vegetable and rice. But then, you know, plain yogurt comes out of the fridge, a cut a little crudite, chutney and pickle, depending on what you're eating, papadams uh, or papar, um, which is, you just roast it, it's ready to go. Dessert, oh, Indians totally believe in dessert. So it's something to, we totally subscribe to the fact life is short, eat dessert first. So be careful, I mean, something to keep in mind how much dessert they're eating. We love our sweets. And beverage of choice is always water. Okay, um, all right. What are the dietary concerns then? We see a traditional meal, a dietary concern is Indian diets can be high in carbohydrate, simple sugar and sweets, all right? And they're high in fat because a lot of frying can go on and a lot of, you know, sauteing them in oil. They don't have to use so much oil, but they might be. The high in sodium, a lot of um, snacks, so a lot of potato chips, um, type of snacks, not potato chips necessarily, but chips and we call them namkeens or savory snacks and we're way into that. Low in protein, just because it's vegetarian, again, it's not as low as you think, but it can be depending on what the person is eating. They're vegetarian, but it's too hard to cook dal or beans, then they're not getting enough protein. Too many processed foods. If you've ever been to an Indian grocery store now, oh my gosh, the freezer section is full of processed foods. All you have to do is um, microwave it and you're good to go and you know that that is salty and high, high saturated fats. What should you be telling them? They need to eat three meals per day, one to some. These aren't gonna be any different for Indians as they are for others, but make sure they're getting their three meals a day, encourage them. They should not be skipping meals because remember they're hyperinsulinemia and if they eat too much, then of course their blood sugars uh, eat too much. If they skip a meal, they're gonna eat too much at another meal. And that's, uh, that's a trip, you know. Balanced meals, um, they should balance, um, of course, carb protein and fat, nothing you don't know. Three to five servings of vegetables per day. Encourage, encourage, encourage. Show them what a portion size looks like. And um, again, they may think they eat a lot of vegetables, but my bet is on that they don't. Two to three servings of fruit per day. I only say two to three because first of all, as you know that fruit sizes are bigger. A banana is almost two fruits these days. Apples are bigger than normal. Even oranges are bigger than normal. And it's easier to just say two fruits per day. And remember they have high triglycerides, okay? And so two fruits a day would be great. They're getting their fiber, they're getting their nutrients and not so much extra natural sugar even. Reduce total fat and saturated fat. We don't wanna reduce their fat too much, but 25 to 30% fat is, make sure that they are not eating more than that. Saturated fat is coming from ghee, milk, a lot of dairy products. So they need to do, um, they need to, you need to see where to cut that down. Limit sodium intake. Indian food can be very salty and they are used to that. Majority of the sodium is again coming from, um, it's coming from um, snacks as it is in the US market. It is coming from, um, um, what else is it coming from? Well, majority of it is coming from snacks. Uh, sorry about that, okay. 
All right, they need to maintain a healthy weight. Now, the interesting thing about a healthy weight is their weight needs to be, remember they're okay with their weight. You're gonna have to, some um, discussion about needing to lose some weight, okay? And I would say when they, you say reducing their weight, use the diabetes prevention program and look at 7% less weight. That might be more tolerable. Reduce alcohol intake. Now, traditionally, alcohol was a taboo, but in the last um, 20, 25 years, Indians are drinking more and more alcohol as it's become socially acceptable. Some are drinking, maybe drinking too much, again, linked to triglycerides. Smoking cessation, of course, nothing goes without saying. Regular exercise is crucial. We'll talk a little bit more about that. They're very sedentary. Stress management, get them into yoga, meditation, nothing new. They need to prevent or manage their diabetes. Everything we just talked about, healthy eating, increased activity, taking their medication, monitoring blood sugar, and knowing their numbers. They totally subscribe to good life. So when you are talking to them, think about what's of value to them. We said family is of value. But the good thing is they're okay about what they eat. You just need to tweak it, okay? Show them if they could just add more vegetables, they'd be better. They totally subscribe to prevention, first of all. They subscribe to cure the power of food. We grew up with our parents telling us, um, eat this because it'll do this, you know? Um, they are very much into strong, uh, into healthy eating. Um, it is talked about on a regular basis at home. Traditional and international meals. Now, important thing is what I call tripti or satisfaction, okay? It needs to be there. You can eat the best pasta. We can eat the best pasta, salvation, in the world. But what's really going to give you the the tripti, the satisfaction, um, on a daily basis, might be some traditional foods. Like my comfort food is dal and. Uh, dal and vegetable and rice, you know, or dal, vegetable and roti, as I call it, and um, the flatbread. So what is their traditional, but they're, again, we talked about how they're integrated into, they want integration there. It's become very common to have sandwiches at noon and traditional meal at night, okay? And so you need to work with both. Uh, breakfast is often a quick Western breakfast of um, toast and tea or toast and milk and cereal. But where you're going to have a lot of uh, discussion is traditional meals and as well as working with the Western meals. Trace Trump's nutrition, nothing new here. That's true of everyone. Um, again, satisfaction is crucial. You know, the, I find that my plate works great for them. Remember we saw that tali where there, if you just put them in the right bowls and they would just fit here and there's your dairy and you've got yourself a tali in the my plate, myplate.gov. I probably may uh, move the fruit to a snack and turn this into half of it into vegetables. Portions, portions, portions. I always say, especially when you, whoops, especially when you're eating okay to begin with, it's really more about watching what you're eating. It has, same thing has happened to them as it has happened to everyone uh, or all over the world. Our sizes have gotten bigger. These are the little bowls that they ate in. You have a small katori. Uh, we call these little bowls, stainless steel bowls, the skatori. You saw them in the thali. Um, they used to be half, uh, three quarters of a cup. Is I have a, a thali, I mean katori, that's three quarters of a cup. 
Then I have a katori that's one cup, but I've recently seen bigger katoris, like they're almost two cup katori there. And then you'll often see, see that Indians often, we like our food to be separate. You know, the dal is separate, the vegetables separate. So there's always a bunch of bowls. Okay, here I have an eight ounce bowl in my house and I have a 12 ounce bowl in my house. Actually, I think that's a 16 ounce bowl. All right, so here I did some typical measurements. So, you know, you got your rice and then here's a dal or beans and here's a paneer sabji. And here I put it in a eight ounce bowl. It's the same a three quarters cup of dal here, which is one serving. Here it is in a, in a 16 ounce bowl. And here is a half a cup of paneer sabji in a six ounce bowl. So just like all your other patients, smaller bowls, smaller plates is, is super helpful in feeling better. Portions in Indian cuisine have gone high, just like everything else. So you have, here's a typical roti that I grew up with. It's about six inches, it's thin, it's about one ounce. Here's a dosa, South Indian dosas, which were, think of it as um, like a six inch tortilla, a 12 inch, 10 inch tortilla, a 12 inch tortilla. You know how much more dough goes in it. On the other hand, a naan, a naan is a three ounce to four ounce, okay? And you're, here of course is a restaurant dosa. On the right hand side is your homemade dosa. And, uh, and that dosa is what? I think it's a 16 inch dosa. You just eat one of course, but there it's huge. It's thicker than the homemade dosa too. So again, nothing what you haven't seen in but it's also happening in Indian diets. Where's the protein uh, for vegetarians? It is, they do eat dal. So again, there's more soupy than it's one and a half cup, but beans, kidney beans, chickpeas uh, is a half a cup. You have paneer, tofu, plain yogurt, nuts. And then of course the non they're, they, if they're eating meat, you have the, also the meat, fish, eggs, and cheese, okay? Alcohol has become huge among the younger lots as well as older ones. Um, we know they add extra calories. They affect your blood sugar levels, but the biggest is they impact their triglycerides, okay? So, question, how much are you drinking? They may say not a lot, only socially, but how often is that? Exercise, I like to follow the diabetes prevention program recommendations, 30 minutes, five times per week, a total of 150 minutes per week. Um, definitely important. Indians are, as I think I said earlier, is sedentary by nature. So by nature, by nurture, we're in trouble both ways. Uh, like to be lazy, you know, like to be a couch potato. We worked hard and they did, or we did because you were on the computer for 10 hours, but they haven't walked. They need to get out, even in the COVID era. That's why I worry, what is gonna happen in all these lockdowns? Um, as Indians emerge or South Asians emerge from this on the other side, as well as the rest of the world. Activity, 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 and hyperinsulinemia in, you know, and it's as well as um, difficulty processing insulin or insulin resistance as helped by exercise. But any activity is better than none. I used to tell my patients, if you can't do much, at least walk for 10 minutes. And maybe you can do it three times a day uh, after every meal or preferably before every meal. I always remember this one thing when a uh, doctor said um, as he was giving a presentation and somebody asked, um, 
what do you, he said, exercise every day. And so a person in the audience says, what do you mean by every day? Uh, and he goes, well, every day that you eat. And I love that statement because especially with high triglycerides and insulin resistance, they need to, they need to embrace activity. You know the benefits of exercise. I don't need to go there a lot, um, okay? It increases energy, it decreases stress. Help them find what helps them. I used to tell my patients, tell me what you like about exercise or how do you feel? And tell them to embrace that now, hold on to it. You know, how did you feel when you exercised versus when you didn't exercise? Um, and of course, lowers, again, I keep harping on the uh, triglycerides, um, increases uptake of insulin and um, um, lowers blood pressure. They know a lot of that, of course, everybody does, right? Um, but, and younger, younger uh, Indians are more doing exercise than the older ones. But remember, you're gonna get the 50 plus people, right? Here's the question, where is their source of information? Okay, doctor, mom, uncle, everyone has diabetes, right? Or no, you see that among your own patients, right? They already, and everybody has advice. Talk to your doctors, ask them to refer them, tell them they're very likely to get diabetes. Or if they have diabetes, I wish more doctors were referring these patients. They will need, Indians do tend to trust doctors, which is a good thing, okay? Now, if the doctor refers them to a dietitian, they're more likely to go, okay? And I've had so many patients that are, they're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? Because, and you need to of course work with uh, their meal plan and make them feel good. Unfortunately, I do get a lot of patients who say, the dietitian doesn't understand my diet. And that's why we're doing this session. You need to understand what they're eating and work with what they're eating. They're eating well, okay? They probably just need to make tweaks, as I said before. They need to see a diabetes educator. They're not checking their blood sugars like they should. Um, and by just seeing somebody regularly, they're more likely to do it. And you guys know all that, but talk to your doctor about it. Okay, and exercise help is needed too. Maybe if they just go to somebody, um, that might be helpful. Uh, they're afraid, they're, they're, they're afraid of exercise because they don't like discomfort at all. <laughs> I know some people at home that are like that. It's like, okay, you're not going to get hurt. All right. Uh, what's a sample meal plan? What Here is something I've done already for you. You go to um, my website, cuisineofindia.com, and you will get a sample meal plan. This is a typical meal plan, which is high in carbohydrate, high in fat, it's 2,600 calories. And then a modified meal plan, uh, which is um, of course, less fat, less sugar, less calories, 1,600 calorie me meal plan, and it reduces portions. So, so you can download that from my website. And uh, there's more, this is just one handout. There's more menus there. And, um, oh, these are my two cookbooks. Um, I have a blog called Cooking with Madhu. Indian cuisine, this is the first tab. That's where you'll find the meal plan. I have two cookbooks, um, New Indian Home Cooking and the Indian Vegan Kitchen. And they, the, I would encourage you to ask these patients to buy this book, not just because it's mine, but not all Indian cookbooks have nutritional analysis, right? And they don't have any clue as to how many carbohydrates are in their dal or whatever they're eating, right? 
And um, so that's, to me, is the big benefit. They'll also find meal plans there. They will find in, information about the vegan diet in general, as well as Indian diet in general. So it's not just recipes. Um, and you'll find a lot of that on the website too. And then there is again, not just a sample Indian meal plan, but there is also 500 calorie menus for two weeks, which are vegetarian and vegan meal plans. And of course the recipes are coming from the, uh, recipes are all coming from the, um, from the books. So we can calculate that. Otherwise, how would you? Indian recipes with NA, uh, also that's on the blog. So if I post anything, there's always going to be a nutritional analysis of the recipe. Have people sign up for the blog um, or you guys sign up for the blog. I'd appreciate that. Um, I'm on all the social media. I look forward to connecting with you there. And here is my last thing. You know, it's again a cartoon I've had forever. You know, um, eat in moderation and enjoy life. People have become a lot more, a uh, lot more, um, sorry about this keeps coming, a uh, lot more um, <laughs> relaxed on that, but keep them simple, make them something that works for them. Okay. Um, oops, we'll go back a little bit. All right, um, that's it. So I'm gonna come back and stop sharing my screen or maybe we can just ask questions while I still have the screen up. What yeah. would you like to do? We, you can keep the screen up. Thank you so much, Maru. It's wonderful and uh, fascinating. We have some questions. Okay. Um, what kind of beauty weight ideals are held by South Asian cultures and white, what might be considerations for the treatment of eating disorders in this population? Unfortunately, that has become an issue too. Um, again, as more and more, it's just, I always say, you know, as you start to adopt more of the Western culture, you're also, you're adapting bad with the good. And um, so what was the question? Like, uh, yes, in, uh, all I can say is I that- Ideals are held and are there considerations for eating disorders among this population? So eating disorders, I would treat them just like any other eating disorder, okay? Which is more psychological than anything else. What is the beauty held in this country? I mean, in, in among South Asians, Traditionally, it was skinniness wasn't valued, okay? But it is increasing. More and more people are uh, wanting to be, look like Westerners, so to speak, and be thinner. So I don't think it's what the values are being held, it's what value that person has. And again, I would say it's more psychological as well as it is um, nutritional. Great. Does immigrating to the U.S. and introduction to the U.S. diet have a larger impact on incidence of diabetes and um, coronary heart disease compared to those Indians that did not immigrate, or are the rates similar? Actually, uh, that's a very good question. I missed it somewhere. Um, is that... Um, it, this is something being very much studied right now, but most of it is, or they have been studying and they can't find necessarily a correlation. We'd like to think it's all because of their immigration, but it's not, you know, as you can see, the maps that I was showing you were people in India that were increasing, doubling their um, impact of diabetes and heart disease. So it's, if anything, they're maybe eating more cheese, they might've started eating more, they may, might have added meat to their diet. But again, I would say it's not, it's not the diet. It's, our studies show that it's not just the immigration, except for the fact that they're even more sedentary. 
and their weight might be going up, which is throughout the world. I mean, throughout India, Indians are getting bigger than they used to be. For all the reasons you showed us. Yes, for all the reasons <laughs> that we all have now. We, what what do you think? We, yeah, we say that diabetes and heart disease are, are part of the new um, diet and I mean, our affluence, if you wanna say that. Right. What is the incidence of lactose intolerance among Indian Americans? Um, lactose intolerance is Indians pretty much to tolerate uh, milk, first of all. Okay, lactose. But I'm seeing more lactose intolerance. I don't know if it's because the stress factor is increased. I think of Indian diet a traditional Indian diet to be very much like a Mediterranean diet, which is a lifestyle, which means you're eating with people. You're not eating alone, okay? And if you're not doing that and you're sitting at your desk and eating, your stress level is going up. So is that increasing your lactose intolerance? I don't know. I see more people with lactose intolerance than I ever heard before. My, my memory is my grandfather would have a glass of milk before he went to bed because that was his way of going to sleep. Hot milk. <laughs> Does ghee have less saturated fat than regular butter? No, it's basically clarified butter. And what you're missing is the solids and it is saturated. Okay, a few more. I'll try to get in before three. Um, I understand that Asian American patients are recommended to be screened for diabetes at BMIs of 23 rather than 25. Is this true for the Indian American subgroup as well? Yes, Indians are designed. Yes, it is. Um, please talk to your doctors and get them, get them in your office and, and show them these data. Yes, they, like, Indians are what we call as skinny fat because they have more fat than muscle in their body. Again, it's genetically predisposed. Okay, so okay. yes. One last, since the carbs add up quickly with rice, bread and dal, what do you think is reasonable for total carbs per meal range um, for Indians? I would say uh, have their diets 50 to 60% carb. Okay, and, and once they balance it, they'll be fine. Okay, it's the swing of, um, you know, they will have to eat less rice, they will have to eat less bread um, or roti, but um, still they can include some rice, they can include some bread, um, uh, roti, uh, otherwise they, they will go back to their tradition they will stop following the diet. So work with it. Um, look at the sample meal plan. It'll give you lots of ideas, but they do add up. One person asked to whether 500 calories per meal was too low. That's just a sample. I'm not saying that you should eat. I mean, if you did five, this is just dinner, lunch and dinner menus, okay? Um, add, add to it. This is just a sample menu. Well, it's a delicious sample meal, and uh, your presentation was wonderful. We thank you for um, helping us and, and uh, giving us some passion for your Indian cuisine, and thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, contact me on my website if you have any other questions. I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Madhu. And thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, please uh, check out Madhu's website, and we hope you'll come to the Old Ways website as well, oldwayspt.org. Um, have a great rest of your day, and thank you. Thank you, Sarah.